Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice chess puzzle that was um, composed by Paul Benko when he was still a teenager, I think around 15 years old and um, I was just, uh, well we don't usually show puzzles on this channel, sometimes we do, there's no rule about it and uh, sometimes I feel like showing a puzzle, sometimes I don't, but basically it's one, once or twice a year maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe I'll show more, maybe I won't, it really depends on how I feel. But uh, I was strolling the internet the other day as I usually do and I came upon this tweet by um, historian Olympio Urkan saying that according to Paul Benko a young Bobby Fischer lost two bets when he tried to solve this composition of his. Uh, naturally I was very intrigued by this tweet and uh, of course I clicked on the link and it uh, takes you to the chess history website where you can learn a little bit more about uh, the story behind this puzzle and uh, uh, yeah, I will put a link to it in the description below. It will be the first thing you see, so you can check it out yourself. And also, I will I will put a link to uh, Mr. Olympia Urkan's profile on Twitter, so you can follow him if you are interested in increasing your uh, vast knowledge on a daily basis, as he will quite often post uh, very interesting things uh, uh, regarding chess. Now, it's not that um, chess, uh, chess knowledge is located on Twitter, but uh, a lot of people use Twitter, especially uh, pretty much all the, all the modern top players, uh, and you will learn a lot of stuff as maybe you can be pointed towards uh, in the direction of vast knowledge and check it out there, like in this case, uh, the Chess History website. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who are maybe lazy to click on the link, I will mention the story briefly. Uh, it was during the 1968 Lugano Olympiad in Switzerland. Bobby Fischer was uh, spectating the event and uh, the Soviet team really crushed the field. Uh, they came with uh, Tigran Petrosian, Boris Paski, Viktor Korchnoi, uh, Efin Geller, Lav Pologevsky uh, and Vasily Smyslov. They crushed the field with an uh, eight and a half point lead. So just uh, complete Soviet domination. Uh, but uh, regarding this uh, position here, Paul Benko asked Bobby Fischer, well, he uh, he uh, said to him, uh, I, I will bet you that you cannot solve this puzzle in half an hour. And Fischer, of course, it was the 1968 Fischer, so the very strong Bobby Fischer. Uh, oh, <laughs> the 1970 Palma de Mallorca tournament where his incredible streak begins is only two years uh, from this moment uh, here. And of course, Bobby was very interested and he said, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's have the position and I will solve it in half an hour. And after the half an hour mark expired, uh, Bobby was still unable to solve the puzzle and he demanded that the solution uh, be, be presented to him. Now, I will show you the solution. Uh, maybe if you don't want to see it, maybe if you really enjoy the position and the story behind it, maybe you just want to, you know, uh, keep it for yourself without knowing the solution. Maybe you can have it, you know, uh, on, on your table somewhere at home and then just enjoy it every day if, if you don't want to know the solution or you can, you know, uh, but it's better maybe uh, to, to do it that way. But if you're just interested in the solution, then you can also show it to your, you know, friends in, in the library and the bar. Uh, and it's just a very nice idea. Uh, so for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here it is. This is the solution Palbenko presented to Bobby, uh, Bishop to C4. There is only one solution, and that's uh, the other part of the story, uh, that there is only one solution. Uh, after Bishop to C4, uh, Black has two options. He can either go King E5 or King F5. All of the other squares uh, are taken by the Queen, by the Bishop, by the other Bishop, and the Queen c uh, controls the entire D file. So here, if you go king to f5, uh, then the idea is next. You will get queen to h5 check, and after the king moves, uh, you will, uh, for example, go king to f6, uh, then you get queen to g5 mate, as now the queen slices this way, the, the bishop slices this way, and the king has no squares. You can see that the queen guards these squares as well. Uh, on the other hand, after queen to h5 check, if the king goes to e4, then it's just queen to d5 check. Again, queen slices this way, bishop slices this way, covering the dark squares, and well, all of the squares are nicely covered, the king has nowhere to go. Uh, so that's one way after king to f5. Uh, another idea after uh, king to uh, king to f5 is that you can uh, play queen h5 check, but also queen to f3 check uh, seems like a possible idea. For example, now if king to g6, now uh, after king to g6, uh, you will play uh, queen to f7, and this is again mate. Uh, because, uh, again, the dark square bishop covers the dark squares and, well, you just slice uh, all of the all of the squares here. And on the other hand, after queen to f3 check, if you go uh, somewhere else, for example, king to e5, then you get queen to f4 mate. 
Again, it's the same formation, queen covers these squares and the bishop slices this diagonal here. It's a very interesting puzzle because sometimes you will uh, uh, find yourself in a position where you can maybe, maybe deliver mate on the board and you will know that, uh, for example, a bishop and queen for, uh, you know, two squares apart deliver mate if the queen checks the king. This, this is mate. Uh, so that's uh, if the king goes king to f5, but also after bishop to c4, the king can go king to e5, and then it's uh, a different mate, it's queen to d5 check, king has to go to f6, and now it's queen to g5 mate, again, the same idea, bishop slices over this way. There is one uh, possibility that doesn't work, but it's very interesting, I thought it works when I was looking at the position after king to e5, uh, I thought it was queen d7, I, I usually don't think that... Uh, uh, the, the solution involves such brute uh, checks. So I, I thought it was queen d7, and then after the king uh, goes to e4, uh, then, of course, you deliver uh, queen to d5 mate. The problem is, uh, after this, uh, uh, well, uh, queen to d7 move, you can go king to f6, and now there is no mate. You could deliver mate if the queen could come to g5, but the queen cannot come to g5. You can deliver queen to f7 check, uh, but then king e5, the king escapes, and well, that's three moves, uh, you don't have four moves. Uh, so yeah, uh, maybe I even forgot to mention that, yeah, it's uh, mate in three, you had to find mate in three, so sorry if I, if I missed that, but... Um, uh, you, always when you, when someone asks you to solve the position, it means find the, find the solution in the uh, least uh, possible number of moves. So if you can mate in three, then that's the solution, even though you can find obviously mate in 50. So sor sorry about not mentioning that, but you know, uh, s solving the position means uh, uh, in this case, delivering mate. So yeah, probably should have mentioned that, but uh, it, I, I, I hope it works either way. Uh, but that's uh, the point. After this, bishop to c4, bishop uh, Fisher uh, saw the solution, and then he uh, bet uh, Palbenko that Fisher can find another solution, not just the bishop c4 one. He was convinced that there was um, a, a different uh, winning move uh, where you can deliver mate in three, but there is no uh, such. Uh, uh, such mate, uh, and uh, the bet was that uh, Fisher can study the position overnight, and then he would present Benko uh, with a solution the other day. So, uh, as the story goes, Fisher tried uh, to solve it for the entire night, and he failed. Uh, but yeah, uh, there is uh, another solution, only it's a mate in four, so that doesn't count, yeah, you need a mate in three. Uh, th another solution would involve, for example, queen to d6 check, uh, and then king to f5, bishop to d3, uh, check, king to g4, now comes queen to f4, check, king h3, and now bishop to f1, check. This is one such idea, but this is mate in four, and we need uh, the, the shortest solution possible. So uh, th those were the two bets that Fisher lost. Uh, I don't know if they actually bet in something like, for example, a bag of gold or something. Uh, I don't think so, as uh, it was. Pr it would probably be presented in in uh, Paul Benko stories, and it was. Pro it would probably be written in the Chess History website. I think it was more of a more of an honor uh, type of bet where Bobby just couldn't uh, solve it, and Benko was very happy. And Benko was very impressed himself that uh, he was able uh, to give such a challenge to Bobby Fischer with uh, a composition that uh, Benko uh, composed when he he was fifty years old. So really an awesome puzzle. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you can impress a lot of your you know, friends at the uh, library and at the bar with this uh, wonderful composition. And then uh, you can just tell them, you know, you're welcome to try and solve it. But you know, Bobby Fisher couldn't do it in half an hour. But you know, you're more than welcome to do it. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the puzzle. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Tony Moad Guitar and Dirk uh, Elseviers for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the Capablanca saga, we still have to show Benko versus, uh, Benko versus Tal in the Kurosawa uh, Candidates Tournament 1962. And of course, as usual, I will be checking up on your suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.